Welcome to InventorCamp Professor on our series of Getting Started. I'm Sydney, your InventorCamp Professor, and in this session we'll be dealing with our first sample of mill turn. If we take a look at the part that we have on our screen, you'll see that this part, besides the turning that has to be done on the part itself, there's also milling that has to be done around the part on all these sizes whether it be drilling these holes, milling out those slats, and s or this flat area. Let's take a look now at our coordinate system for a moment and we'll see that we have a number of home positions for this particular part. We see we have position 1, position 2, position 1 being for the turning and for these drilled areas itself, position 2 position 3, and so on and so forth. Basically every single side has a home position that we've created including the turning. Now the first operation that I've done, I started out with my turning operations. And in my turning operation, what I've done here is as follows. I've chosen my profile to be, go across over here, where's my tool? If we take a look at the tool itself, it's meant for external roughing. In my technology area, I chose to work along the part externally, doing rough, and if I do a simulation of the part itself, And if I do a simulation of the part itself, you'll see the toolpath going around and we'll actually put this on this particular view over here. You'll see the toolpath works its way around the part itself. And we can also see this in Solid Verify as a tool is milling out the part exactly according to the geometry that I've chosen. My next operation, I've continued with the turning operations and used actually the same profile with the same tool, but this time I'm also doing a finish cut on the part itself using semi-finish, finish, rest material only, and using the easel turning method for finish. Now in my next operation, I chose to do the drilling option within turning itself. Whereas I have the center of the part itself has to be drilled out. I've chosen the tool and if we take a look at the tool it's a with, with a diameter of 11 meter, millimeters and in my technology area I have my drill start position, drill end position and I'll be using a cycle plus I'll be using the chamfer of the tool itself. Now, if I do my simulation, again using the option of Solid Verify, you'll see that the tool goes in and drills out the middle of the part itself. In our next operation, we're still working in turning, whereas I have to finish the inside of this part turning the part, including the step that's inside over there. So I've simply chosen to do uh, my geometry being the inside of the part itself, as shown over here. The tool being an internal rough tool. My technology, again using rough, and also using finish method. If we take a look at our simulation, we'll see that the tool goes inside the part, and I'll actually use this view here and completely turns the entire inside of the part as shown here. My next operation, 
I've decided to start with my uh, milling operations to mill out this slot over here from this view. So I've simply gone in, chosen my geometry, and as you can see my geometry in this particular case is this area over here. The tool that I'll be using will be a two and a half millimeter end mill. My level, my upper level being this surface over here, up until the depth of that particular slot over there. My technology being using the left side of the tool, doing a finish cut, and my link being uh, approaching with a tangent and doing a lead out with a tangent as well. Look at our simulation right now and we'll use again the option of solid verify for our simulation you'll see that our tool actually goes down into the part and mills out the entire slot to the depth that we have chosen now in my next operation I've chosen to drill these holes here so I'll be using the same home position my geometry in this particular case are these three holes using a two millimeter uh, drill and my levels again using the upper level and the drill depth to the very bottom of the hole itself And in my next operation, I've also chosen to do another drilling operation, but this one being inside this hole here, using the same options of drilling. In my next operation, I've decided now to mill these flat areas over here. So I've simply gone into this area over here using my new position for this particular surface. There are a couple ways I could have done it. I've chosen to do it using the pocket option, whereas my geometry in this particular case is this area over here. My levels, upper level, lower level, and in my technology, I chose, since I work, want the tool to go past that boundary, instead before that boundary, I chose an offset of a minus three millimeters so the tool will actually go past. If I do my simulation of the part itself, you'll see that the tool goes down and covers the entire area. Now you'll note that when I did my simulation, it did this on both sides as well. This is because that in this particular operation, I've also gone in and chosen the option of transform fourth axis and when I've chosen this option I've written in here that to also do this at 180 degrees and to include the original side as well therefore it did it on one side and did not have to do new geometry for the other side just simply flipped over did the same thing on the other side as well now, continuing in this home position, I've also decided to drill out these holes using the drilling option and staying within my Mac 1 position 3. If I go into my edit of this field, you'll see that I'm in Mac 1 position 3 and my geometries are those two holes as well, using a tool of 2.15 uh, millimeters and my upper level and the drill depth that I wanted to use for this particular part itself. If I run my simulation, you'll be able to see now, and I'll use this time to solve a verify simulation, that the tool will go down and drill out those two areas on that particular face. My next operation, I've chosen to ch work in Mac 1 position 4, which will cover this particular slot over here and over here I've chosen to use the profile operation using my Mac 1 position 4 my geometry being this area over here as shown my tool again being my two and a half millimeter end mill 
and my levels, my profile depth going down the particular floor as shown over there. Now, in my next operation, I've chosen to work a MAC1 position 5. This will now cover this area over here. If I look at my top view, you'll see that we're talking about this hole and this spot over here. So what I've done here is very simple. I've actually just uh, chosen to do a drilling operation. And in the drilling operation itself, my geometry is as shown over here. My tool, according to the size of the hole itself. And of course, we have our levels and technology of the part itself. Now, in my next operation, I still have to work on this spot face over here. So I've just simply chosen to do that using the pocket operation, having my geometry being that particular circle as shown over here, and using the proper tool of a 2.5 millimeter and mill going down to the surface over there. Now, if I go to my next Mac position, position 6, you'll see we have the same thing over here, and I've done the same, basically exact same two type of operations as I've done for this particular hole over here. Now, in my next Mac position, back to position 2, I've chosen to work in this pocket area over here, and if I go into the operation itself, we'll see that my geometry in this particular case is, as you can see, this area over here. But you notice that this floor is not a straight floor, it's actually a radius floor. Now, what I've done here is I've chosen the option of fourth axis within this option over here using the fourth axis type of wrap. What this actually does, it takes that area, wraps the tool around that particular surface and continues milling it out as if it was a regular pocket but having the part turn as it's milling out those areas. If I run my simulation you'll see that my toolpath will completely work in that entire area. With this now we have completely milled and turned our entire part. Thank you for joining us on InventorCam Professor. Take care and have a nice day.